and uh, super thank you super very much uh, Kixin, for this kind introduction uh first of all i would like to thank the organizers of this uh, wonderful online meeting uh, for the invitation to give this uh, keynote uh, lecture it's uh, um, uh, honor for me to, to present this keynote lecture so i will give you a talk about the extraction of palladium precious metal from aluminosilicate supported catalysts by spectacle co2 assisted by polymers. This is a, a collaborative uh, work. I will present uh, the people uh, during my talk. But uh, I would like to uh, thank very much uh, Andrea Rouillou, who was a postdoc uh, in our group working on, on this topic. And he did a very uh, good work, as you will see. And uh, he performed most of the experimental work uh, that I will present today. Uh, first of all, I will begin with the context. Uh, and first of all, which are the precious uh, metals? So the precious metals you can see in the middle of the periodic table, they are ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, indium, gold, platinum, iridium, and osmium. And also sometimes uh, rhenium is also introduced, included in this category. Um, the, these metals are rare, they have outstanding chemical properties and they are very expensive and this is the reason why they are called precious metals. Today I will uh, mainly focus on palladium. Actually the precious metals are used everywhere in our everyday life. Uh, at home we have some lights which maybe include some silver. In your smartphones you have many precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum or uh, palladium. In your screens, you also have some precious metals. In solar cells on the uh, rooftop, you also have some silver metal, some uh, precious metals. And importantly also in your cars, uh, the catalytic converters are plenty of uh, precious metals. Now, we, if we uh, focus a little bit more on palladium, palladium is also everywhere in our everyday life. It is used in several applications such as jewelry, dental applications, electronics, chemical applications, petroleum, and, and also investment. But as you see on this uh, graph, on this sl slide, the automotive catalyst is a major part of the applications of palladium. And actually, two years ago, in 2019, the octocatalyst palladium demand was 81% of the global palladium demand in the world. So it's very uh, a big application, and this is the biggest market. What about the price of palladium? I told you the uh, precious metals are very expensive. Here you can see on this graph the, the price of platinum in blue, gold in green, and uh, palladium in orange uh, in the last 15 years. So in, uh, 15 years ago, the platinum was the most expensive metal, but now you can see that palladium is becoming very expensive. And, and this change is uh, because uh, palladium has uh, partly replaced the platinum in the autocatalytic uh, catalytic converters in our cars. So the palladium is really the, 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 the good choice to make the, this uh, study. What about the palladium demand and supply? I told you the applications, and actually the demand for all these applications was two years ago about 300 metric tons per year. What about the supply? The mining industry is able to provide two uh, 100 metric tons uh, two years ago, and uh, the urban mining supply was about 70 tons uh, two years ago. So you can see that it's very important to be able to recycle the palladium from uh, industrial wastes. And this is uh, the topic of this talk today because the mining industry is not able to offer all palladium to uh, contribute to the demand of palladium uh, per year in the world. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the palladium is not only a precious metal, it is also a critical metal, a critical raw material. And the reason is that uh, the palladium resources are mainly in Russia, South Africa, and North America. And so you can see that the palladium is not homogeneously uh, distributed on the earth. And so for the, for instance, for the European market, European economy and ASEAN economy, it's very important to also have uh, a possible supply of palladium. And this is only possible by recycling uh, the industrial waste in these countries. So this is what the industrial uh, players are doing, such as uh, Eraus is an industrial player in the recycling. 
of uh, these metals, and they are building the circular economy of precious metals. Uh, the difficulty is that the wastes and scraps uh, in the industry are containing only low quantities of these uh, metals, and therefore it requires some special separation, separation techniques. The separation techniques are mainly pyr pyrometallurgy, and uh, the drawback of this uh, technique is that it is very energy intensive. You need high, very high temperature, more than 1000 degrees. And the other one is hydrometallurgy, which uh, is using uh, usually uh, acidic aqueous mixtures. And the drawback of this is that it will generate large amount of acidic effluents. So there is really a very big need for the development of environmentally friendly alternatives to these uh, two methods, which are industrially uh, relevant, but uh, which can cause uh, problems for the health. And we need to develop new methods uh, for recycling of precious metals. So in the past few years, uh, I've already worked on palladium, but it was impregnation of palladium. Uh, this, this work was about the preparation of silica supported palladium catalysts. And I will show you uh, how we did, we did this. We uh, uh, prepared some special polymers which are soluble in CO2. And these polymers are CO2 flick, but also complexing. They were able to complex palladium salts. And the complexes are still soluble in CO2. So we were able to impregnate some materials, some porous materials. It was silica materials in this case, with these polymers, loading palladium in the, in the support. And after reduction, we end up with a silica supported palladium catalyst. So it was a full process, polymerization, impregnation, and so on was uh, able to be um, performed in CO2. And now the goal is, is it possible to do the reverse? Starting from the supported catalyst containing palladium, can we go back to recover the palladium? So this is the topic of today, and this is a SuperMed project. So the, 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 the goal is to start from the industrial catalyst loaded with some precious metals, which might be palladium, platinum, or rhodium, for instance, and to design some polymers to be able to go inside the CO2, so soluble in the CO2 phase, and go inside uh, to leach uh, and to go inside the support to catch the palladium and to remove the palladium, to bring the palladium in the CO2 phase and to recover the palladium. Ideally, the CO2 might be recycled and the polymer could also be recycled, ideally. So the strategy is to design some nice polymers to catch the palladium, to put these polymers in contact with the support, the, catal the catalyst support in the CO2 extraction uh, autoclave. And on after extraction, on one side, we should be able to recover the support, it, the, the, the support of the catalyst because it is not a, a destructive uh, extraction. So we should recover the support free of palladium and on the other side, we should recover the polymer which are loaded with the palladium. So this is the goal. And for this, we built the consortium, the SuperMed consortium. So I am coordinating this consortium as a polymer chemist. ERAIUS is the industrial partner uh, providing the, the catalyst, the industrial catalyst. Uh, the ECIA is a laboratory for analytical chemistry, which was able to titrate the uh, palladium in our different products. The Final Four Institute in Germany is able to do the extraction and the scale up of the CO2 extraction. And IFES Association in France was uh, taking part for the networking and also they are in charge of the life cycle assessment. So first of all, the targeted polymers of our uh, project. So we, we prepared different kinds of polymers. And the first one is the homopolymer PFDA. It's a polyfluorinated acrylate which is a very useful polymer for us because it's very, very extremely co 2 -philic. So it's very soluble in CO2. And then we introduced some complexing groups. So we prepared some gradient copolymers with a, spe a special structure uh, involving some special uh, complexing groups, aceto acetoxyethyl or a phosphine derivative or a peridine derivative. So all these complexing groups in red are able to complex many metals. And among these metals, we can see that palladium is uh, possible, possibly uh, complexed by these uh, uh, polymers. So I will not detail the synthesis of the polymers, but we use the control radical polymerization technique, which is called RAFT. And this is very important for several reasons. 
The first reason is that this control molecular uh, control radical polymerization technique allows us to control the molecular weight. And it is important because the higher the molecular weight, the lower sol the solubility of the polymer in CO2. The second reason is that by this technique, we can also control the composition of the polymer. It means how much uh, complexing monomer units we will introduce as a polymer. And this is also equally important because if you have too many complexing groups, which are CO2 phobic, then the polymer will not be soluble in CO2 anymore. And the la uh, last but not least, we also can produce some polymers with a special gradient architecture. So it is not a blocky structure with uh, all red and all green. The, 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 the red uh, units are distributed all along the chains. So it is like an, a surfactant. It's like amphiphilic copolymer in CO2. And the, uh, uh, the interest in this gradient architecture is that we have uh, demonstrated 10 years ago that these gradient copolymers are much more soluble than block copolymers in CO2. So what's about the uh, polymer phase behavior uh, in CO2? So we have prepared these polymers and we looked at the solubility of these polymers by cloud point pressure. So this is a pressure and this is a temperature and these are the cloud points. It means below uh, of the cloud point uh, curve of the polymer is not soluble and above the cloud point curve the polymer is soluble. And for this homo polymer, which is our benchmark, you can see that we have a solubility uh, at uh, quite low pressure. What about our copolymers? So we have done uh, the cloud point curve for the, the three copolymers. And you can see that still we have uh, uh, some very interesting results because all polymers are soluble in mild conditions, despite the fact that we introduced many uh, CO2 phobic uh, units in the copolymer. So, of course, depending on the composition, we have different solubility, but uh, there is not a huge difference between the uh, homopolymer and the uh, gradient copolymer. Still, they are soluble, and especially if we look at 40 degrees and 250 bars, you can see that our polymer, all our polymers are soluble. So, we can play with all these polymers in our extraction setup. What about the palladium supported catalysts? So ERAUS, the industrial partners, afford us a different catalyst. I will show you one type of catalyst. This is a transmission electron microscopy picture of the catalyst. So you can see here, it is a aluminosilicate support. This is a gray uh, part of the picture. The bit size is about 100 micrometers in size. And it is a porous substrate with a pore diameter of about 20 nanometers, which is the white uh, pores here. And you can see the nanoparticles, which are the small black dots, which are the palladium nanoparticles here. They are very small in size, about two or three nanometers in size. And the content of palladium in this support is about two weight percent, which is determined by ICP. Uh, the most important is to characterize the oxidation state of the palladium inside the support, because depending on the oxidation state, the extraction might be different. So by XPS spectroscopy, we uh, characterized uh, the oxidation state of palladium. And we, uh, we will start with a virgin catalyst provided by uh, ERAUS, the industrial partner, which is called the CAT-D catalyst. It is a uh, dark brown powder. And the XPS shows only one peak corresponding to palladium oxide. So this virgin catalyst is mainly palladium oxide. Then by reduction of this catalyst under hydrogen, we uh, obtain uh, another new catalyst, which, which is called CAT-D reduced, CAT-D red. Now it's a black uh, dark powder. And by XPS, we know that it is mainly palladium zero, palladium metal. And after we took this and we oxidized this under chlorine gas, and we obtain a third catalyst, which is the oxidized catalyst, the CAT-D ox. And now the XPS shows that the main, uh, the main palladium species are now palladium chloride, sodium palladium chloride. And this last uh, catalyst is orange. So the color is depending on the oxidation uh, state of the palladium and the form of the palladium. The chloride gives orange color. And so we now we will play with these three catalysts in the extraction setup. The extraction setup is very simple. We have a CO2 bottle. We will feed the ISCO pump, which is a high pressure pump. We will put our polymer uh, in grain and the support of the catalyst 
uh, loaded with the palladium uh, in, in gray in the extractor. And we will feed with uh, CO2. We will work at 40 degrees and 250 bars. These are the conditions we know the polymers are soluble under magnetic stirring for one hour. And then after one hour, we are flushing CO2 to remove the polymer and we recover the polymer by bubbling in a water collection, collection mass. Uh, to uh, determine the extraction conversion, we titrated the support after extraction by ICP, and we also washed the extractor with acetone, and we determine also the uh, content of the remaining palladium in the acetone. So the extraction conversion corresponds to all the palladium which is extracted from the extractor. And we started, uh, of course, by CO2 alone to check that the CO2 is not able to, uh, uh, to uh, extract uh, the palladium from the support. So we have very low extraction conversion with CO2 alone, which is expected, but uh, we, didn't, we need to check this. And then the first polymer we tested was the HOMO polymer. Uh, the HOMO polymer uh, has a functional group, which is the N group, uh, due to the raft technique for the synthesis. And this ditiobenzoate moiety may have a, a, a small uh, effect for uh, a complex, as a complexing group. And indeed, when we introduced this polymer in the extraction setup, uh, the uh, extraction conversion was not zero. So it was depending on the oxidation state. Uh, it was a um, better result for the oxidation oxidized catalyst, but still uh, it is better than CO2 alone, but still uh, the values are quite low. So we started to play with our copolymers, and this is uh, the acetoacetoxic copolymer. We know that there is an equilibrium between the keto and enol form, and we also know that by activating this enol form to form the enolate, we should obtain a better complexing ability. So we tried this, and here you can see the results. For the non-activated polymer, the uh, results were very bad, so it's not a good complexing group in our uh, uh, conditions. And uh, for the activated uh, enolate uh, copolymer, uh, the results are not so good for the uh, catalyst D virgin and the redu reduced catalyst, but for the oxidized catalyst, we have uh, some uh, interesting results. So we need to activate uh, the, the acetoacetoxy group. And for the oxidized catalyst, we have 45% of extraction, which is a good promising result. And then we switched and we changed the complexing room group uh, to, to phosphine group. And in this case, uh, for the catalyst D, the origin catalyst, uh, we had 25% of extraction for the reduced 14%. And again, for the oxidized form of the catalyst, we obtained 69%. So this uh, DPPS, uh, phosphine copolymer, is able to extract uh, palladium in a really, a really uh, good uh, conditions. And this imp improvement between the phosphine and the acetoacetoxy uh, shows us that the phosphine is best, be better ligand than the acetoacetoxy uh, copolymer. Uh, so if I uh, summarize, uh, we started without activation by a low extraction conversion. Then by activating, we improved the conversion. And by going to the phosphine, we also improved the extraction. We obtained 69% of extraction conversion. And now I will show you the result for the CAT-VP, the vinylpyridine polymer. In this case, we obtained 20% of extraction with the catalyst D, virgin catalyst. We obtained 24% of extraction for the reduced catalyst. And again, for the oxidized form of the catalyst, we obtained very good results, 73%. And actually, if you look at the uh, support of the catalyst before and after extraction, you can see visually that you have, have, you have extracted the palladium because the orange color is fading, so it's much lighter air because the palladium was extracted from the support, which is recovered at the end because this is not a destructive extraction. Um, from this, we can uh, uh, propose a mechanism of extraction. We think that when the uh, palladium is in the form of palladium oxide or palladium zero, uh, the uh, polymer plays the role of a steric stabilizer. So we are sterically stabilizing dispersions of palladium oxide or palladium zero nanoparticles in CO2. So these uh, very small nanoparticles are able to flow and to be extracted from the support. But this is uh, interaction at the macro scale. 
uh, in contrast, when we have the palladium in the form of sodium palladium chloride, we think that our polymer is able to interact at the molecular level and rally to complex the palladium. And we end up with unimer macromolecular complexes, or maybe uh, two micellar complexes soluble in CO2. Micellar because our polymer are uh, amphiphilic in nature. And so because of this very strong interaction at the molecular level, we have a much better extraction conversion. Uh, you, you see that um, uh, for the catalyst D virgin, the, the extraction is not so good. So we, we try to improve this. And to do this, we, we try to uh, make a formulation of the extraction, uh, of the extraction uh, mixture. So we tried phosphine alone. Phosphine is not very good. Uh, phosphine with piperidine uh, increased a little bit the extraction conversion. The polymer was not so bad alone. But when we mixed the polymer with piperidine, we had a good surprise that there was a 64% extraction conversion, which is really good, uh, uh, given that we started from the catalyst D virgin without any pretreatment. And so the, it seems that there is a synergy between the copolymer and the piperidine. And this is, uh, this is uh, something that we, we need to continue. So uh, as a conclusion of this talk, uh, uh, I think I convinced you that we're able to prepare a nice platform of copolymers which are able to extract and to interact with palladium and they are soluble at 40 degrees and 250 bars which is really uh, easy reaching conditions. Uh, we are able to extract up to 73% of the deox2 palladium uh, catalyst, it means uh, the palladium in the oxidized form. In the case of the virgin catalyst, we were able to reach 64% of, of extraction, uh, plaguing with a synergy between the copolymer with the phosphine group and piperidine. Still, we have uh, to better understand the mechanism, and we also have to optimize the conditions to improve these extractions, but uh, still, it's uh, already uh, good. We also uh, need to improve the recovery of extracted palladium because we are able to extract, but the collection of the palladium at the uh, outlet of the um, setup is not so easy uh, so far. And um, from this, we, we think that this concept should, could be uh, extended to other critical metals, such as platinum from fuel cells or cobalt and lithium from batteries. And this is a, a project that we will uh, try to start uh, in the next uh, few years to contribute to the green circular economy of critical metals and critical materials in general. So I would like to thank all the people uh, working in this uh, SuperMed project, all the coordinators uh, in the different countries. I would like to thank the uh, funding agencies, ADEM and INR in France, and the funding agencies in Germany and Romania, and also the Commission, European Commission for Funding. Uh, this is a group photo of uh, my uh, polymer uh, department in Montpellier. This is a group photo of the SuperMed uh, people. And I would like to thank you very much for your attention. I, I will very be pleased to answer your questions.